Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Two movie thoughts. I should try to get all my corny jokes out of the way immediately so that those who can't stand them can skip ahead. When Lenore was, you know, when, when they were talking about how the, she's going to be sent back piece by piece, I, I, I couldn't help but think just, oh, that's, that's too much. The shipping is going to be insane. I, I don't know. I, I guess Lenore is Jewish all of a sudden. To send me back just once, that's, that's fine. That's more than I could possibly ask. Or maybe she's the godfather, I don't know. And then right after you get that the tiny little scissor, it's like, okay, I, I don't think that one's gonna be able to cut her to pieces. I just, I, I don't know where, I'm, I, I don't wanna tell you how to do your job. Just saying, I think you might need something a little stronger. And then he like gets behind her and you see, near the shoulders and he's got the little scissors and I just I I'm expecting him to open his mouth and say so when was you when was your last haircut and then you know, he starts getting slightly pervy and then he starts like cutting open her clothes and it's I, I'm sorry that's just mean there is no reason to ruin a perfect look at shirt when Kim is lobbing grenades. It's it's very good that she is she's told three seconds, you know. Otherwise she might have held on for four. Five is right out. D don't count to only one or two unless you then continue to three, but not four. And the, the second time that he calls, calls her and tells her, throw, throw another grenade. That time he doesn't actually tell her, make sure you don't throw it at anyone. So I just, yeah, in, in my twisted little mind, she actually threw it at like, a crowd and like, ah! Yeah, anyway. Yeah, I think that might more or less cover the jokes. And that does bring me nicely into he calls her on his cell from his cell. Yeah, I guess I had just one more joke in me, sorry. These guys just clearly do not know who they are dealing with. And why don't they? They, they knew about the first movie. He killed a couple of dozen people in that movie and found his daughter incredibly quickly. Why wouldn't they think that he had skills that might mean that it wouldn't be a good idea to watch him all the time, even if you do think that you've got him chained up? I... I... And I guess... Was it that he had like an extra phone? It seemed like he had that in near the bottom of his pant leg or something, or maybe, or maybe it was more. Yeah, I'm I'm not entirely clear on that, but I could see Brian as having a backup phone. And yeah, it would also seem like they should maybe. Maybe have patted him down. Just again, just just saying that 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 would seem to make sense to me. But who am I to question? I'm I'm not a gangster in in Istanbul. So the 
I also like how he's just he's certain that he'll be able to call her in in five minutes. He do, he doesn't just tell her when you get there do this or that. It, and and she even has to wait for him to call. He's like, come come on, call call. You know you don't usually see a girl that young, you know, desperate to get a phone call unless it's from her boyfriend. So yeah. Now the when they you know, near the actually I think it was the first scene when we get the when we're told that it's Albania. Uh, I know. I, I think it was mentioned in the first one that it was Albanians. I half expected. I half expected them to be you know, white and red eyes. Yeah, it, it, kudos if you get the reference. Now the. I like that the daughter actually got to do some stuff this time that uh, she played a more important role and she was actually really important. If, if it wasn't for her, she, Brian wouldn't have been able to get out. So that's, that's a huge step in the right direction. And, and I, I do, do kind of like how they set up the thing of, you know, she hasn't gotten her driver's license and she apparently she she failed the test so and and like wasn't like several times like two times she flunked out or something like that and suddenly she has to drive a, a car in this high speed chase you know through streets she doesn't know it would have been kind of funny if the GPS suddenly like flipped out on them or something if. It, I don't know, maybe I'm the only one who thinks that. However, I, I do still say that basically, like I said, that's a scene we've seen so many times before. You know, suddenly this person who doesn't seem capable of driving this car or something has to drive the car and has to make it work, and they even have him like lean out of the car and shoot at it. That's the kind of thing that would not have happened at all in the first movie. It's that movie was not terribly Hollywood-ish. This one, it's much closer to Hollywood. Also, when the, the goons are shooting through the wall, when clearly he's like, I didn't even get why they kept holding on the shot as if it was like, ooh, we know he ducked. We saw him duck. They should have edited it differently if they wanted us to be, like, you know, really tense during that. They they have, they could easily have just had, like, he's going through this place and then suddenly it cuts to them. And then one of them nods to the other and then they start shooting through the wall and they keep shooting. And then we're like, <gasps> did he, did he get down in time? And then... Suddenly, he shoots back, and we're like, ah, oh, he lived. Something like that, but yeah, they just hold. And he gets a hold of an assault rifle, a Kalashnikov, and he barely uses it. I don't know, held on to that thing, at least until the clip ran dry. Man. Now, the... And I like the them, them driving up to the American embassy so that she can be safe there while he retrieves the mother. And the, the having to call, what was it, Sam, the, the Leela Orser, the, the CIA buddy. Can you call someone so I don't get shot getting out of the sky? And I really like that detail too because you know, if he had... <laughs> After driving the car fast up to the place like that, 
getting out of the car would probably have gotten him shot. And it makes sense that they don't just stop before the embassy and just get out of the car and say, we, we need asylum, because what if they don't... The, the police are right behind them. They need to get into the embassy. They can't just hope that the, you know, the military will stop. And you know, the military immediately opened fire, probably because they think that that's, you know, Assange. Now, I liked the, the thing with Lenore getting cut and then they hang her from the... That's, let's be honest, that's where the gimp is hanging most of the time, clearly. And she, she gets like hung from the ceiling like a horse. And is and, and they he, he describes and in half an hour she'll be dead. And the thing about it, you're the expert. You're, you're an expert at killing. And okay, just one more bad joke. I, I think this might be the last one I have. I'm gonna find them. And I'm gonna make sure that this never happens, that they never come after us again. How? I'm gonna do what I do best. Yodel. Sorry, sorry. Then the... I like how both, both hero and villain get a speech like that, by the way. There's that one with Brian, and then at the beginning, there's a, this person came for us and he killed all these people. You know, we're gonna find him, and we're gonna make sure... It's, I, I don't remember the exact words, but yeah, the, the beginning of the film was him delivering one such speech. So it's again, you know, the first one had a speech like that, so this is the sequel, we gotta double it, we gotta have two speeches like that. I really didn't feel like the movie benefited from having a villain. The, uh, yeah, the, the revenge thing was fine, and... Crap, I, I will follow that tangent once I finish off the, the, the one I started before. Yeah, the, the, she's hanging from the, and, and the thing with, in half an hour she'll be dead. That puts a very nice, it's, it's a good ticking clock. It really helps, it, it changes the stakes. Suddenly she might die within half an hour and that really, it keeps the energy going. Because you didn't know, five minutes ago, you did not know that she, her throat would be slit partially. That's that's a great way to to keep it, and and that's the the kind of unexpected turns that that that's what made the first movie quite good, and this one not quite as good because it doesn't have that many of them. Yeah, that's that tangent finished. Now, as I start to say, the. Son of a... Crap, what was I saying before? The revenge thing. I like that the, the actually, the, the bad guy actually gets an out. The thing. I, I couldn't help but think, just turn off your phone, dude. You can't keep hearing you if you just turn it off and then like, yeah, yeah, d d what's it called, decline the call, then turn it off so it can't be, so it can't call it again, then he'll have to do something else to find you at the very least. Anyway, he finds him and he's like, oh, I'm tired of this, you know, Hollywood keeps them on and, you know, do these action movies, they say I'm, you know, one of the only big action stars anymore, and just, I'm pushing 60, it's not right. Anyway, he gives him an out. He says, if I kill you, then your sons are gonna come for me, and then there are gonna be two villains in the third movie. And that's just, yeah, anyway. So I'm, I'm, 
you know, if, if you promise me that you will not pursue me, I'm just going to put down my gun and we're going to, and, and I won't bother you again. And he starts to put down his gun. And I was like, dude, didn't, he didn't even promise you anything yet. He's like, no, no, I, I, I haven't even promised. Oh, okay, the gun's down, okay. Ah, I had my fingers crossed the entire time. And he picks up the gun. And I do like that the, the bullet, because we saw the clip go out when the, the, the two were shooting at each other earlier. So there would only be the one bullet in the chamber. And he checked for that. And... Obviously, he then took it out, which he could easily do, just you know, pull, pull the slide and tie it on the back. And it'll eject it. Anyway, the... Yeah, yeah that, that, there was that thing of, if you, if you do try to kill me, then I will impale you on... I don't know, like a... Was that like a hook for a coat or something? Anyway, and the the preceding fight at the at the, at the sauna, I guess it was, pretty cool. It uh, yeah, it it was a lot of fun watching that, and I like how it it didn't feel forced. You they fired guns at each other first, and both of them knew what to do. This guy should have been training all the others because clearly he knows what to do. The others not so much. Why didn't this guy tell them to pat down Brian and all that stuff? Anyway, and they, they, they both block and just make sure to point the gun away. You don't want to struggle too much for the gun. It, you, know, you, you might just get shot. You want to block so that the gun can't shoot directly at you. And both of them do that. So both guns get fired a bunch of times clips go out, and then they're fighting. It makes a lot of sense. Now, the... I also like how when, when Kim threw the gun down the steam pipe thing, yeah, that the clip fell out, and then he had to get that before he could shoot them, before the two, excuse me, before the two guys came in. That was a nice way to keep the tension going there. How much of, would you maybe say like a third, would you maybe agree that a third of the dialogue that Brian speaks to Lenore involves the words I'll come back for you a little later. She's got to have serious abandonment issues by the end of this film. That, yeah. You know, it's Stuart at the beginning of the film, or between movies, I guess. And now, <laughs> Brian twice leaving her behind saying, yeah, I'll, I'll come for you a little later. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, it's not like he went bowling. Now, the... I read on IMDb that apparently Luc Besson said that this will be the only sequel. And I think that's probably a good idea. The... I, I think that the film does a good job of tying it up. It's, it's again, pretty Hollywood. In, in, with the end really suggesting that now, you know, both are, you know, Brian and Lenore might get back together, you never know, and Kim and Jamie, you know, so, yeah. Am I the only one who thinks that maybe Kim's motivation for trying to get his parent, her parents, sorry, her parents back together is that she really hopes that if her father just gets laid, he will lay off, as it were, to not 
obsess so much over the uh, yeah. I I did like the the joke there at the beginning where he finds Jamie incredibly fast and uh, yeah. Well, actually, yeah, that's the GPS. I don't think they should have explained that. I think that would have been really funny if it had gone completely unexplained. I actually briefly forgot that they did explain it. If, yeah, if he had just shown up and it would have been, how did you find? And it's like, maybe he should even have, like, had a, a joke line, like, it's a government secret, like, you know, if I tell you what I did to find you, yeah, the government's gonna be on my ass, so, yeah, I can't tell you. Something like that. I suppose that might more or less cover it. Yes. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.